I think history has a lot to teach us. We learn from it and we go forward carrying the best of it. And we can hold on to tradition in a positive way. So many of the sisters found that the renovation of the chapel kind of captures all that. The Sisters of St. Joseph are a congregation of Catholic religious women who are committed to the vowed life. We take vows of chastity, poverty, and obedience. We live in community and we are actively involved in ministries throughout the local area and beyond. A young priest, Father Jean-Pierre Madai, founded a group of six women and he asked them to be different than other religious in that instead of being what we call cloistered where those that just stayed and prayed and lived in a community and did not go out to the neighborhoods, he asked that these women go out to the poor. The little design, he called them, and they became the Sisters of St. Joseph. We came to America uh, at about 1836 at St. Louis um, in a little place, a log cabin called Carondelet, and uh, that's where they started and then we came to Philadelphia from there. The chapel was begun, I believe, in the 1880s. And at that time, the sisters were just kind of struggling a little bit financially. So they started and at one point had to stop because they didn't have the resources. The last time there was any work done in the chapel, any significant work done, was probably in the 50s. And um, so we had pews that were old pews that were not comfortable, to say the least. Um, we had, as I said, that space between those participating in the worship and the celebrant of the worship. So as liturgical celebrations have changed and really focused more on community, we needed to bring that into our worship space. Working with Doug and Paul gave us great confidence because they had such a sense of what we were trying to do. I think at times even more than we did. I mean, we were able to say, this is what we'd like to see, but really not put any um, specifics to that. Really, Paul was able to, from the beginning, help us develop some things and present them back to us. And we'd say, that's exactly what we want. The sisters were in need of a design that reinforced communioning, intimacy, accessibility, and comfort. Well, our intervention was to pull the altar out into the chapel and then surround the altar with, uh, with the intimate seating arrangement. As we are an aging community, that became, you know, um, a tremendous need um, to make things accessible and more feminine. Soft lines, curves, uh, these sort of gentle touches, seats that were more appropriate to daily mass, a new pew that was more comfortable and had a warmer uh, feel to it. The corona is this really beautiful design element that sits above the altar, calling attention to via light sources, light on the altar and on the ambo and on other aspects of, of the mass. Everybody that comes in this chapel now says it feels so much more um, at home. There's so much history over a hundred plus years and it was really important to uh, memorialize this, um, this work in a way that celebrated those that had, had come before. All the sisters have been through here at one point or another in their lives in the congregation. So it's, it's part of the history of us congregationally, but also very personally. So I think it has great meaning for every member and even beyond members, for our families, for our friends. People come to the chapel for all kinds of celebrations. So it's really a touchstone for us as members of the congregation. There is something about that space that makes people um, take a deep breath. And I think, uh, I think and I hope that it, uh, it'll serve the sisters well into the future.